This next video is going to be basically talking about how to use the layout function so you can lay out your points or your temporary points. This is most likely one you're going to use pretty often. So on this application window on the right side here, I'm going to just swipe down on it and you see all my applications. The one I'm going to be doing is right here, layout. I'm going to tap it. Now, well, let me explain something to you. Um, when you open up the menu for it, you can lay out a couple things. It asks you, do you want to lay out points or temporary points or both? You can have both checked as well. I'm going to start with just points being checked so you get the idea. Uh, so here I am, I have my laser turned on at the top, you can see, so I'm not using the prism yet. But if I want to lay out a point, I just zoom into my drawing, I tap on the point I want to lay out. I tap LP5, I'm going to let the tool turn there. And I'm on the laser, it's, on the, it's looking at the concrete, well, my laser's looking at the ceiling, but I'm laying out this job site on a ceiling right now. And it's going to try to zero in on that spot, and it's going to tell you where it's able to hit it. Now, if I want to find the zero of that, so it, I look at my laser, and if I'm using the laser, all I do to find the zero of that is I slide a straight edge um, object, whether that be uh, like a ruler or something that has it, like even like a business card, just straight edge on that laser beam. Just like, basically slide it back onto it until you find the center of it, and this tells you that you're zero in on that line, on that point. Make your mark, and then make uh, the uh, cross mark along the laser beam, and you've just marked your point. That's how you use the laser to lay out. Uh, let me really quickly connect to the prism to give you a better idea. One second. All right, I'm going to go to my... Well, let me show you how I got there. So I'm going to go to this arrow button. And then when you have this arrow button pressed, you can choose to either like move your tool, uh, go to the map and have it turn to a spot on the map, or change uh, the type that you're... how you're laying out, whether with prism or laser. So I'm going to swipe down here. I'm going to tap that. And I'm going to not check laser, but I'm going to check prism. If you have this option, sometimes you only have one of these, but I'm using the POS 180, but this is what I want. This means that you're going to be able to track your prism as you go. This is mainly used for if you have standing prisms that you don't need to have tracked, but you want to log on to sometimes. That's what this is. I would just always default to this. It basically does the same thing. So again, you want a locked prism, so it stays locked onto it. And let me choose the correct prism type going to be this guy. Okay, I'm going to have a lock onto it. Okay, so my prism is locked onto it. Now my prism's here, and the tool is going to guide me to this point. And it's basically saying that if I'm looking directly at the tool, if I'm square to the tool, I just need to pick that prism up and move to the left three feet and move barely back three inches. So I'll go ahead and do that a little bit. Right now I pick my, my prism up. I'm just moving it over to that area. And when I get close, then I can actually mark my point on the ground with my stake. Now, some of you might see that these numbers here are turning red or green, and you're wondering why. Well, if you go to your settings, and you go to your tolerance, you can set this tolerance to say, okay, I want it to stay green. I want it to turn green only when I hit a certain tolerance, just so that you can, like, help yourself. I have my tolerance set to off because I like green colors. But if I go to good, for instance, good tolerance, if you look at layout, it's going to only turn green when I'm within 2 and 3 eighths inches on the 2D and then 3 and, three and 1 eighths on the height. So let me show you what this looks like. Let me pick this guy up again. All right, so you can see... They're red, everything's red, and then as I get closer, as I get within that tolerance, the values start to turn green. So that's, but notice the numbers don't change, but the uh, the colors do. So that's just a preference for you. So just remember colors, if you wanted to turn red or green differently, go to your settings and change your tolerance. Now, one other thing I'll show you, again, again we're only doing point layout right now, points, is when you actually go, um, if you want to select another point to lay out, you can either tap it right here on the screen. So I can just tap like LP1, for instance, and it's going to start guiding me to LP1. Or I can open up the side menu here and actually select it from here. So I'll tap LP6. And now LP6 is selected and it's telling me to guide me to LP6. So you have a couple of ways that you can choose the points. But uh, all I want you to remember from this is that 
when you're doing point layout and you have points selected what you're laying out are the points that you've already created via the draw function on your on your drawing that's what you're laying out and when you get there so let me lay out LP7 here because I'm pretty close to it if I lay out LP7 let me get close okay so here I am right at LP7 if I want to lay that out and stake it I can press the measure button on the right and you'll notice that it's going to turn it well let me save it so you see how up here it says it's going to stake it it's going to call it LP7 staked and it's going to tell me my deviations of when I staked it I'm using my prism and I'm not even trying to get super close so my deviations are off um, so that's what it was like when I staked it so my heights are way off but if I'm laying out horizontally I just want to make sure that these are accurate it tells me the layer it was staked on and then I can just say either don't show this again if I, or if I want to edit this I can but I'll go ahead and say check and now if you look LP7 is oops is red because it was laid out outside of my tolerance but at least it changed colors on me to indicate that I did lay it out it's green in here probably because I was, at the, I was within my tolerance for my X and Y but over here it's probably staying red because I laid it out uh, and it has the heights way off. All right, because my height's my ceiling. I'm obviously sitting down with the prism six feet underneath the ceiling. So I hope that's clear. Leave questions in the comments. Now let me show you the next part here. So let's say that I only want to lay out temporary points. Okay, I'm going to go back to my laser because now I think you understand prism pretty well. So now I'm on my laser and uh, let's say I want to lay out LP1. Sorry, not LP1. Let's say I want to lay out uh, because I'm on temporary points. What temporary points is, is I can come in here and say, okay, under temporary points, I'm looking at my CAD drawing. I'm going to just tap a location on my drawing, and if it has one of these CAD elements on it, I want the tool to move there. So, for instance, if I wanted to lay out endpoints, notice over here, I don't have any, I don't have an actual point. But obviously it's an endpoint on my CAD, so if I tap it, the tool is going to automatically consider it to be a point and turn there and lay it out. And so once it gets there, I can mark it, and then I can go over here, press measure, and I'll go through the stake process to stake it and confirm that I did it. So if you look here, it's going to call it LP14, and I'm going to come down here and say check. And now over here, LP14. is green because I laid it out with intolerance. All right. So let me go back to temporary points. So those are my that's how you use endpoints. And then here's the rest of what you can use. Just go to the CAD file and tap the object and it'll guide you to those points automatically for you where you can stake them. Let me show you one other thing is that you can come into point type and you can actually have multiple selected. So let me have like midpoint and endpoint selected. What that means is like as you move around, it will auto snap to any of these that you have checked. So if you're walking around the job site with your prism, as you move around, it's going to auto snap to the most nearest temporary point, whether that be center of circle, endpoint, whatever you have checked over here. And just be careful because sometimes, for instance, I'm on intersections right now. It will find the intersections, but sometimes it'll find any intersection nearby that point. So just make sure that when you're looking at your point using temporary points, that it's actually going to the spot you want it to go, and you should be good. And one more thing regarding heights and prisms. Just make sure that if you're using heights, when you're using your prism, so let me go back into prism mode. Let's say you're using heights, you got to make sure that your height of rod is accurate. This is where you type in your height of rod so I can click this. Your height of rod is obviously standing above the ground. You need to make sure you measure accurately from the center of the prism down to the bottom of the ground where you're measuring so that your height of rod is accurate so your 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 um, heights stay accurate. Just make sure you do that. Um, yeah, but that's how you use again this application layout. You can lay out points, temporary points, or you can lay out both at the same time. 
and I'll just have both selected. You can be bouncing around to the points you've made or to the temporary points that you want to lay out on the CAD.